G'day crew, just building up the new climbing bike, put the compacts on the 175s, take these bad boys off. Today's topic, Levi Leipheimer, dope cheat reaction. Levi Leipheimer, very well known professional cyclist, raced for uh, a lot of teams, Rabobank, Team Einstein, uh, US Postal, Astana, Radio Shack, uh, Mega Farm Lotto, things like that. Recently, got involved with the whole the you know the Lance thing. Had to testify in court, owned up, and his team dropped him. Basically, <laughs> that's the message we're saying in society: tell the truth, and we'll fucking fire your ass. <laughs> Stay silent, and everything can keep going. No worries. Like this. <laughs> That's the world we live in. It's not cycling. That's just the world. Tell the truth and you're fucked. Lie and you're probably going to get away with it. <laughs> Most people get busted because they own up, unfortunately. So Levi admitted to doing you know, testosterone, EPO, things like that for multiple years, up to 10 years perhaps. Testosterone and stuff like that. And I'm reading on the forums, people are like, I'm so disappointed, you know, watch the... The Levi Effect documentary, which I recommend. I'll put a little link down below. Great docker. I watched it recently. And you can buy it on Vimeo. And uh, it's, it's crazy just reading people's reports. People want to believe in a fairy tale. It's like you want an athlete to do a three-week stage race and smash it on the front and battle it out with the other riders. You want someone to slam dunk when they've got a bit of a knee injury. You know, you, you don't... <laughs> you, want some, you want some NFL player... To just smash through all the pain and you don't want them to do drugs though you want them to have you know 240 pounds at five percent body fat but you want them to be all natural and if you can't turn up for work and you've got a bit of a, a, a congestion with a cold it's okay if you take Sudafed so you can go and do your job properly but if you're a professional athlete like a cyclist then that's that's doping that's cheating and actually Levi Lightheim got his first doping violation back in 1996 for popping some uh, some cloud high tea now here's that what it is, it's a hay fever medication, it's ephedrine, it's speed literally, it's a performance enhancer, indeed it is. But here's an advert for this methamphetamine style ephedrine speed you know, stimulant. Check out this advert, what a fucking hypocrisy. It's Sue on third. Yeah, gonna have to reschedule Tuesday. <laughs> I bet you would. Tony. Well, I'm at work now, so I can't talk, can I? <laughs> how much? I know how you like your muffins. <laughs> well, if you ask me, Stephanie, she needs to go on a diet. <laughs> Sudafed congestion and headache deals with the cause of congestion and also relieves your headache. Being a bit woolly-headed? <laughs> mucus makes the congestion worse. Try mucus relief tablets, new to Sudafed. They ease the swelling in your nasal passages and help to reduce the amount of mucus you produce. For a clearer head, try Sudafed. I can't let allergies stop me from leading the way, so I get Claritin clear. I can see clearly now. All right, let's move on, team. Claritin works hard to relieve my worst symptoms, and only Claritin is proven to keep me as alert and focused as someone without allergies. Whoa. Watch your step. I couldn't do this without you. Don't let allergies hold you back. It's gonna be bright, bright, so Live Claritin Clear with non-drowsy Claritin. So that's reality. It's advertised on TV, but if you're a professional athlete like Levi was, and you take that and you don't have a, a script from your doctor, which is called a therapeutic use exemption form, so you can take all these drugs. You can take testosterone, you can take, well growth hormone is not really a test for that, so you can do that easy. You can take, uh, insulin is not detectable, you take insulin and not get busted. You can take testosterone and ephedrine, these two stimulants, and salbutamol, which is an asthma inhaler, and you can get to a, a script from your doctor, which is called a therapeutic use exemption form, and you will not test positive, because they will not test for that, because you've had permission from your doctor to use banned drugs, because you have a medical reason for it. But if you don't have that little piece of paper, and you test positive what Levi did, then... You're fucked. So, how how crazy is the world we live in where it's okay if you're a school teacher and you're a bit sniffly and you can't focus properly, pop some speed pills, some ephedrine, some Sudafed, some Claritine, do your job properly, that's okay. You're a cyclist and you want to perform better, so you're taking 
you know, some, some Sudafed, but you're gonna get busted unless you have that little piece of paper from your doctor saying it's okay. That's the world we're living. So is Levi a doper? 100%, man. Just like every fucking pro athlete out there who's a big name. <laughs> is he a cheat? No way. There's a difference between doping and cheating. And people just like, oh, you don't understand. Like, I don't even drink coffee myself. I haven't done drugs since 1997, you know? I don't even drink alcohol. I haven't drunk alcohol since 2001, not a drop. So I'm not saying I'm betting anyone. I'm just saying that people got to stop shouting from the rooftops. People are cheaters and dopers and all this stuff. Well, they're dopers, but everyone is pretty much. But they're not cheating, man, because everyone's on the same page. If you want to ride at that performance, you have to dope. If you want to be a water bottle carrier, maybe not. If you want to slam dunk like Jordan, you got to fucking be on the gear. And people go, oh, the NBA does. There's nothing in the NBA. That's just full natty. That's clean as. It's like, fucking hell, man. You believe in Santa Claus? It's hilarious. People are just delusional. Just delusional. It's. But that's the society we live in. You know, if you're an athlete, I can take testosterone or I can go to the doctor. I can do some massive amount of training, which will get my testosterone levels right low. I'll go to the doctor and say, hey, doc, can you test my T levels? Doc will test and they'll probably come back a bit low. Just do some crazy amount of training, heaps of late nights, eat heaps of fat so your, your body's stressed. Testosterone will drop right down. Go to your doctors, they'll get a script. You can take testosterone, get the doctor fill out, get a therapeutic use exemption form. I can show that to Cycling Australia. And they won't test me for testosterone because I say I'm already on it. But that's okay because I've got a, a, a little, what's the word? A little letter from my doctor saying it's okay. But I've just dodged it. I've just fudged it. So it's easy to take all these drugs and stuff like that. Human growth hormone. There's not even a real accurate test for it. Insulin. A lot of athletes use insulin. People say, what? no, no. You, only if you're diabetic do you use insulin. Bullshit. So many professional athletes use insulin. Insulin is one of the most powerful hormones the body produces, anabolic, speeds up recovery. If you're a cyclist, you won't put too much mass in you because you're doing so much cardio, but insulin restores glycogen quicker so you're back out there quicker. Yeah, it can fucking kill you, but... So if you eat a high-fat, shitty diet and your pancreas isn't producing enough insulin for the amount of fat you're eating, it's okay to get a script from the doctor, but if you're a cyclist and you take insulin, that's cheating. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious. And testosterone... Here's an advert for testosterone. This is how common testosterone usage is in the Western world. Check this out. My mantra, trust your instincts to make the call. To treat my low testosterone, my doctor and I went with Axaron, the only underarm low T treatment. Axaron can restore T levels to normal in about two weeks in most men. Axaron is not for use in women or anyone younger than 18 or men with prostate or breast cancer. Women, especially those who are or who may become pregnant, and children should avoid contact where Axaron is applied, as unexpected signs of puberty in children or changes in body hair or increased acne in women may occur. Report these symptoms to your doctor. Tell your doctor about all medical conditions and medications. Serious side effects could include increased risk of prostate cancer, worsening prostate symptoms, decreased sperm count, ankle, feet, or body swelling, enlarged or painful breasts, problems breathing while sleeping, and blood clots in the legs. Common side effects include skin redness or irritation where applied, increased red blood cell count, headache, diarrhea, vomiting, and increase in PSA. Ask your doctor about the only underarm low T treatment, Axeron. So what a joke that people can be public enemy number one because they take a product that's advertised on mainstream TV. You know what I mean? That is just fucking outrageous. That is outrageous. And all these people are just gullible. They're like, I feel like I've been cheated, Harley. You know, I, I supported these, these cyclists and these people, is, but I feel like I've been cheated. And it's like the only person you're cheating is yourself in the delusion that people can do this shit that you want them to do naturally, man. We, as spectators, we have unrealistic expectations of what these athletes are meant to do. And for some reason, cycling seems to get the brunt of this testing. Example, the uh, Operation Porto, the Manuel Fentes sports doctor in Spain recently, they pulled out 200 blood bags, right? Or more so, but there was 200 athletes on a list. 50 of those athletes were cyclists. So there's 150 athletes from boxing, running, tennis, soccer etc in spain some world-class athletes and guess what the judge at the trial said this doesn't involve any other sport this is about cycling that we don't need to go more into it so all those 150 athletes the names we got mentioned in the blood and the dna evidence that was all just wiped out <laughs> so it shows that 
you know, all like Manchester United and all those football. They got some people up there, some big names with big power, just saying, smooth it over. But cycling, for some reason, seems to get the bun of it all. Because generally, in the world today, people hate cyclists. It's sort of like you ride your bike. People want to fucking kill you for riding your bike to work. They're going to fucking cut you off. They're going to throw shit at you. They're going to spit at you. They're going to cuss at you. If you're a cyclist, you're a piece of shit. In the eyes of the redneck society, which unfortunately is quite prominent in today's Western world. So uh, that's a bit of a rant there. It's, it is a crazy world, you know? It is a crazy world. But if you think that, you know... <laughs> I've been saying this stuff for about 10 years, or over 10 years now. Since 2000, I've been talking about how prevalent doping is. And people are like, oh, you don't know shit, man. Like, you don't believe in hard work and dedication and shit. Hey, man, fucking wake up. Levi Lightheimer. Watch the documentary, he started riding bikes and he's 13 years old. 13 years old. All these people, they start swimming at 8 years old and shit, or 10 years old. They're still on fucking drugs, man. Because if you want to be the best, man, you got to dope to the fucking gills. If you're a swimmer, a tennis player, a boxer, a basketballer, a baseballer, 100 fucking percent. If you want to be a world famous athlete at the top level, earning the big bucks, getting sponsored, you got to fucking dope. You will not cope otherwise. That's just how it is. So I'm not saying that doing drugs is a good thing and it's good for your health. And hey, man, a lot of these people get cancer prematurely. They sacrifice their health and shit. But I'm saying that it's so cutthroat in the world today that people doing all sorts of shit are doing steroids and shit to gain a massive amount of muscle. And they're sitting in front of the camera with their brother. And they're like, we ain't, we're natural bodybuilders, man. And buy our fucking protein powder now our fucking whey protein, our horny goat weed, but we're fucking natural, and this is a special program we did, and, and then welcome to strength, we just do this special exercise, and that's why I'm so big. It's not because I'm doing fucking anabolic steroids. Not at all. I'm full natty, bruh. Watch my shit. <laughs> it's like, that's the world we live in. It's cutthroat. It's fucking cutthroat. We live in a world where if you cheat, you su you're successful. You're successful, man. All the big businesses, with the workers and all the shit, it's... It, it's we just live in this fucked up world, man. So the sooner people can wake the fuck up, carve the fuck up and understand what's going on, the sooner maybe we can change some shit when people keep living in denial and going, oh, uh, Michael Phelps, it's just cornflakes and hard work. The sooner people can realize the fucking truth, the sooner we can say, hey man, we're wrong and we can start to make things get better. We can start to change things. Before we can fix anything, you have to admit you're wrong. These handlebars, I don't like them. I'm gonna put something else on. You gotta just wake the fuck up, people, please. All these champion athletes, they're all on drugs. 100,000 million percent. That's just how it is. It's business. It's fucking money. It's business. We live in a world where if you don't have enough money, you die from starvation. The people in Ethiopia or the Uganda, Rwanda, the people who die are the ones who don't have the pieces of plastic and paper, the money, the gold coins. They're the ones who die. We live in a world where it's fucking cutthroats. If you're a runner in Africa, <laughs> you got some talent, some coach from one of these sporting companies is going to come over there and go, hey, you know what? You can run 30-minute 10K naturally. Fuck, we've got a good doctor in France or Italy, and we'll get you on the program. You'll be running 26s, 27s. You'll be winning $10,000 prize money. And I'll be like, fucking sign me up, doc. I'll drink fucking motor oil if whatever it takes. I want to get out of this place. So <sighs> that's just how it is, man. That's just how it is. That's the world we live in. I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying we've got to acknowledge it before we make any changes. Thanks for watching. Post your comments and questions down below. Who do you think's full natty? Fucking no one.